Alright, let's weigh them back at you. Um, I just made a video the other night of uh, some soy dogs. And uh, right as I'm starting to make the video about uh, how to handle soy dogs, um, I actually got to witness, and so did you if you watched the video, uh, these soy dogs go to attack a bystander walking down the sidewalk, a pedestrian. And um, this happens a lot in Thailand, uh, especially in Bangkok. There's a lot of soy dogs, and when they get into groups and gangs like that, they can be a real problem, especially if you're scared of dogs, and I know a lot of you are, especially at night when you're surrounded by ten of them. <laughs> Who wouldn't? Um, but uh, I had a few things that I didn't get to mention in that video that I thought would be very helpful dealing with soy dogs. Um, one is you witnessed how the, uh, the guy handled the dogs. You know, we can look at that video. You can see, look down there, honey. See, he's scared. See how they act? He's acting scared. See how they're getting? They're getting more and more balls. See that? Let me deal with them. Okay, and as you can see, the guy didn't handle that all that well. It instigated the dogs a lot and made them very aggressive um, because they knew he was scared. He's backing up. He's got flight posture. Um, they're very interested in that. They, they feed on it. If they know they can scare you, they'll take advantage of you every which way. Um, so one thing that can be helpful though to keep that from happening, um, I don't recommend you using it if you can help it as uh, I don't believe in harming the animal um, unless you absolutely have to. But um, this I keep in my back pocket. And this is a telescopic nightstick. I picked this up in Bangkok because shortly after I got here, I realized that soy dogs were going to be a real problem at night. And, uh, you know, before uh, I was married, uh, my wife couldn't live with me. We weren't married. So um, I would sit here kind of bored at night sometimes. And uh, I'd like to go out and take a little walk down the road and you know, check out the different little vendors, get a little bite to eat. And, uh, want, you know, I like being able to walk and exercise a little bit. But I didn't want to keep getting attacked by soy dogs. So I was walking by some vendors one night and I found this. And uh, I'll tell you now, I paid about 200 baht for this. Um, I've heard you can even get them for 100 baht. You can get them thinner than this one. This one's pretty big. Um, but you can get these for, uh, I mean, I know if you can anywhere near like any of the Carson Road or any of the places where it's all touristy and Westerners. Um, you're going to probably pay dearly for this, maybe even a thousand baht, about 30 American dollars. Um, but I paid about six bucks for this one. I've heard you can get them for even three dollars, uh, which would be, uh, I paid uh, 200 baht and I've heard you can get them for uh, 100. Uh, but I think the most I'd pay for one of these, if you absolutely had to, would be 300 baht. It's about 10 American dollars. And uh, yeah, so you can find them here for that. So just know that you can negotiate with these uh, vendors on the side of the road. But if you're buying it in, you know, Nana, Asok, uh, places like that, Carson Road, it's all Westerners, it's all, you know, that whole CD industry there. So they're not going to give you the best deal. You're never going to get that. So if you go to, go to vendors at different places a little more away from that, you will get better deals. Um, anyway, so I bought this to protect myself. And what I've found is you do not need to use this on the dog. Um, just the threat of it alone usually works. Um, whenever I'm going to walk at night and I know I'm going to be dealing with soy dogs, I usually keep this in my camera bag in my backpack. Um, you can get the holster for it. Some of them come with it on your side and you can carry it off your belt if you want to have this thing clanking around on your belt all day. But I pull it out at night when I'm walking and I have it in my hand just like this and I just walk with it at my side down low. You know, it's normal. Just hold it in my hand, and if the dog comes up, I usually give them one warning first like this. Try to shake it, point it out, shake it, let them hear that. They hear that rattle. That alone, they don't know what this thing is in your hand. They don't know if it's a gun, and they can kind of comprehend explosions from guns. I think that some of the dogs have probably seen it, but uh, they don't know what this is and what it can do to them. It's mysterious. It's, what is that? Can it hurt me? So they don't want to get too close. So that alone can deter most dogs. If you get a little, you know, a bigger group of dogs, maybe they have a few more balls. Um, they're not as scared of you because there's a group and everything and they get more aggressive then. 
then you can always take this and I usually point it at them for one which usually keeps them at distance but if you have to you can telescope it like this now you've got this now this one like I said it's out and what I do is I like to keep it between me and the dog like this you know I point it at them like just sliding this out alone when they hear this thing open scares them I mean this is metal it's heavy um, and it, it really will scare them. Uh, just the fact that you open this, they usually run. Uh, the rare instance that the dog doesn't run when you open this, um, I would point it at them. That's what I do. I stand there and I keep it pointed at the dog. In between me and the dog, to keep that space. And I'll walk by the dog. I'll continue to walk without taking my eyes off the dog, but I'll keep this pointed at the dog. And I'll walk like this as I walk away. And I keep it. I keep my eyes pointed back as I'm walking pointing this at the dog, which keeps them at bay. Um, absolute last resort, if I had to use it, I guess I'd have to. Um, if you were dealing with a rabbit dog, or maybe distempered, um, if you really, really had to use it, I guess you would. Um, I try not to, I don't want to hurt anything. So, and it, it just telescopes back like that. So, slide it out, and you can put it right back in, and then just carry it. And uh, this works. I have not had to actually use it on a dog, and I wouldn't want to if I had to. Uh, I really would try to do everything I could to avoid having to harm the dog. Because they really don't know any better. It's just their instinct is what they are. Um, a lot of times the reason they're attacking as much as they are getting as mean as they are is because um, we've given them reason to. Uh, uh, whether through our, our insecurity and fear, or through just being mean to them over the years, the dog has built up a, an understanding that we aren't friends. Um, so, you know, it's uh, it's what it is. So, you can go get one of these, and this is good to carry on you. And then, I mean, it would also probably be good to defend yourself with humans if you had to. Uh, I've been all over Bangkok at night through some of the most seedy, dark alleys you could freaking imagine, which I will start an episode of. Uh, dark alleys I've started filming. I thought it was kind of interesting, so I will be putting that up too. And to show you that it looks like just a bad place to walk at night by yourself, but I've done it and uh, I found that I have no problems. Um, maybe it's just my appearance, I don't know. <laughs> maybe I'm just ugly enough to scare them. <laughs> but I've never had any problem of being robbed or even, even had the, even the feeling that that was going to happen. Now pickpocket, yeah, there's been times I've seen people hanging around behind my backpack and I just pulled my backpack to the front and uh, kept my hand on my wallet kind of thing walking through a crowded market. Um, but I don't get a whole lot of that aggression, that straightforward in your face uh, armed robbery, strong armed robbery stuff that um, you would see in America. Uh, I'm actually, I tell you, America I feel less safe there than I do here. Um, I don't feel as threatened here among these people. They. Uh, they don't seem to have that bone in their body, you know, to be that that ruthless that I've seen in some Americans. Just an observation. <laughs> Take it for what it is. Um, but yeah, as far as the soy dogs go, you know, my only fear for Thailand is if the uh, Staffordshire American pit bull ever makes its way to Thailand. Uh, I'm sure there's probably some here. I haven't seen any of that breed here, and it's not the dog because even Staffordshire Terrier American pit bull are uh, not bred to be mean dogs. I mean, well, you know, they're, they're taught somewhat. They are a very game dog though, very game. And uh, if they were to become a soy dog or street dog here in this community, um, they would be a very aggressive dog. Um, and I got a little lizard in here. But uh, I, would, I would definitely not like to see what would happen if pit bulls got introduced to the, uh, to the street soy dogs of Thailand. That would be a very big no-no, um, just because of how game the dog is. Those are dogs that don't don't relent very easy. They have a very strong bite pressure and can be very aggressive. Um, and if put into a wild pack of dogs like that, the normal stomp your foot and make them run thing is not going to work on the pit bull. The pit bull is going to come and bite you for doing it. Uh, they have more uh, testosterone, I guess I'd say. I'm not necessarily, I don't know that for a fact, but they're a more aggressive dog, uh, very game. And uh, yeah, that wouldn't be good for Thailand. And I think if the pit bull did get introduced here and got into the soy dog breed and started, you know, being more prevalent here, 
I think we would probably see the government move to euthanize all soy dogs, which that can be kind of bad too in a way. You know, it's kind of sad they have to kill them all. Uh, but that's um, that could happen. So, so I hope that never happens to Thailand. Uh, but in South Florida, I've seen that breed actually become a real problem. Uh, that's one of your only fears when you're walking down the road in America is when the dog comes up to you, you just hope it's not a pit bull. Uh, because, you know, those roaming the street wild pit bulls can be pretty, pretty mean. I've been attacked twice personally myself by pit bulls in, in South Florida. And uh, I know what, what it is. Uh, one was actually an owned pet that was just way too aggressive. He even attacked me with a muzzle on it and drew blood. Um, and uh, another one that was somebody got out of their yard and was just a highly aggressive pit bull saw me and literally took the pants completely off of me and just missed the family jewels by nothing. I managed to get over a fence before the dog could totally get me, but he managed to grab my pants and my crotch area. And, uh, I was wearing jeans and they were completely ripped off me. Uh, give you an idea of that dog's aggression. So I'm not saying it's a bad breed if in the right owners who take care of it and don't train it to be like that. It's a wonderful dog. You know, they're very loyal and loving, very loving dogs. But they are very game dogs, and if you had a pit bull, then you know that. You know that dog will go so quick to chase a squirrel or something, and you know they're they're very game. So hopefully that never happens in Thailand. But as far as the soy dogs go for you, this is your answer. This will help you. And if you watch my video on how to handle the soy dogs, um, don't turn your back on them. Keep an eye on them. If you're walking away and you know you're a little ways away, turn your back, of course, but keep looking back and keeping an eye on where they are every few seconds till you're far enough away to where they've totally forgotten about you. And, uh, you know, don't turn and run. You run from the dogs. They're going to come after you, and then you're definitely probably going to get bit. Uh, that's just how they are. So, that's just instinct in the dog. Prey. You're running. They're the, you know, you're the prey. So, keep yourself from becoming a victim. Uh, keep yourself from becoming prey. And uh, stand your ground and... Uh, this can always help you. It's a last resort if you actually have to use it, but I've been here for a long time now and I've never had to use this once. I've pulled it out, extended it, but I've never had to actually hit a dog with it. And the dogs seem to give me enough respect they stand back when they see this. So uh, Even some of the bigger, more aggressive ones. But most dogs here in Thailand and Bangkok at least are not over 30 pounds. So I mean they're about 30 pounds most of them, so they're not that big. We don't have the 100 100 150 pound Rottweilers here and stuff that you know, so we're a little lucky there. But uh, yeah, so most dogs are about 30 pounds, you know, you can deal with that. Uh, the biggest dogs I think I've seen are 50, about 50 pounds, maybe, maybe pushing 60. But in America, I've seen 120 pound Rottweilers walking down the street, you know, so it's like, you know, you don't have that problem here, so. You know, they're a little smaller, so they're a lot more fearful of you than a big, big dog would be. I think more worry you should have here would be snakes or something like that, you know. Uh, or the monkeys, actually, that would rob you. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So the uh, this is definitely a deterrent. Works really good. I recommend it. And uh, I hope that helps you when dealing with soy dogs and coming to Bangkok feeling more comfortable. This is a priceless tip that will serve you forever. So... Remember, you can buy this as a thinner stick, too. I don't think size is really going to matter with this. Um, just the fact that telescopes scares them, you know, it works really well. Um, I have the big one because that's what I just happened to come across. So, uh, But if you want, get this one. It makes you feel safer that you have a bigger, heavier stick, you know. Uh, that'll work. So, anyway, thanks for joining me, and I hope you stay safe. Thank you.